stick with us. Welcome to the show. And today we have with us John Limbacher, founder of Internet Dominators. He is a highly sought after speaker in the marketing in the marketing arena, as well as staying on top of emerging technology in the marketing sphere, in the business building sphere. He is a mentor to hundreds of business builders and marketing experts. He is also an author and has built, he's a serial entrepreneur. He has built multiple companies and I'll be right up front. I am part of his community. I am also an affiliate of his because I only promote stuff that I know works that come from people that I not only learn a lot from, but enjoy working with because they're the kind of people that you would just love to have over that our family would love to have over for dinner. And in fact, I've had the opportunity to have dinner with uh, John and his lovely wife a couple of times, and we enjoy hanging out. You're going to enjoy this conversation. One of the things that we'll be talking about, and we'll let you know in a bit, how to get your hands on this uh, AI marketing automation, the unfair advantage. This is a recent book uh, that John has just updated. We're going to be talking about that. And uh, if you want a free copy, stay tuned. John, thanks for joining us today. All right. Well, thanks for having me on. That's really cool to be here. <laughs> I am so excited about this. And as you're watching this, this is this is 21st century television. We are live and interactive. So bring questions. We're watching in the comments. We can see your questions. We want to share your questions with other people and also get them answered. And so the first question I've got, John, is we've watched other technology curves. I'm old enough. Got a little bit of gray going here on what little bit of hair I have left. Yeah, you know, I'm old enough to to been through a couple of technology curves like this. And it seems like we are right in the middle of the explosion of another round of new tech that is going to be fantastic in terms of helping scale businesses, generate opportunities, and also bring a bunch of headaches because now we've got to figure out what do we do with this? <laughs> it, it, what, generally speaking, is this, is this really what all the hype is, uh, is giving us in terms of being a new, it really, disruptive and, and revolutionary release of, of tools that will help accelerate our businesses? Well, it's, it's not actually new at all. This stuff has oh. been around for quite a while. And you kind of alluded to the fact that I just updated the book. That book was, I put that out like two years ago. So really? The AI stuff. Oh yeah. It's been around for quite some time. And I actually, it generated my first piece of AI software back in like 2011. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it was for SEO purposes. Believe it or not, I've been using AI for SEO. That's search engine optimization for a lot of people don't recognize what that is, but that, that's it. It's search engine optimization. And we've been using tools to automate that process using AI for you know over a decade. So, so that's the, that's the application of AI. I want to make sure that, that I'm wrapping my head around this. That, that's the, autom the automation using AI to help automate, to help boost um, people's results. ability to find your website. You know, if I've got a business with a website to be able to find it when they're doing search on the internet, is that? Absolutely. That wow. is exactly what that is. But there's so many different uses for AI, especially now. What's happening now is they're bringing it to the consumer, almost to the consumer level of business. Mm -hmm. Like at one point you had to be like a scientist to use this stuff. And now they've brought tools where like, I got to tell you, I am not an illustrator. I am not an artist, nor am I a video guy like video editing. Yeah, I can do the basics, but when it comes to animation, no way. That is like a mm -hmm. way outside my skill level. But using some free AI tools just in the last couple of weeks, I was able to create an avatar. And for those of you, you know, an avatar is like a representation of a person. So what I wanted was I wanted an avatar to represent my business. And a lot of business owners could use this. This is somebody that could, it's like a, having a spokesperson without having to pay them. So, right? so this is actually animated? 
So when I think of an avatar, I think of like, ah, you know, the, the sometimes funky photos that I'll use as, as uh -huh. my ID on Facebook or on, on uh, some of the social media. Yeah. Well, I have figured out how to use AI tools online, readily available mm -hmm. to not only create an image of whatever you want, but to bring it to life and get it to talk. Pretty crazy yeah. stuff. I, I'm sorry. That just is stunning. So I, <laughs> so it's like a, it's like a chat bot with actual human face and motions and it's and, like having a conversation, asking a person questions. And I made mine look good. <laughs> oh my. Okay, well, okay. Now you've got me interested. Can, can I, can you share? Can I see what can. Yes. Let me, uh, as you're watching this, what do you think? Should we take a look? You want to see uh, see what this chatbot is about? Or I'm sorry, that's not fair. Not chatbot. <laughs> Avatar. She is a marketing expert. Is oh, what she is. okay. So, yeah, let me share the screen here. And uh, I will play her. So you can not only see her, you can actually mm -hmm. hear her. I'm going to let her talk to you. Okay, this is going to yeah. be amazing. Oh, I see. Here we go. Going to bring her here? up. Yes. All right. I'm going to hit play here. Now, the graphic here I created using one program and the, the program, I took it into another program and I created the script. This is 100% AI, the script, wow. the words she's saying, her image and the automation or the animation rather. Every bit of it is AI. So and, and this is without having to do a lot of intense programming. There wasn't any math involved. No math whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. No math whatsoever. So I'll let, let me let her, I named her Becky, which mm -hmm. again, the AI gave me the name for her. Really? It actually gave me a, a list to select from based on the criteria that I asked it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pretty, pretty crazy. I said, I said, give me a list of female names that could represent my company. And I want them to come out of the top. I think it was the top 10 sexiest names for a female that would both be easily understood. Like I didn't want any funky, like, you know, Aphrodite or, you know, stuff like that, but common names. And Becky was one of the ones that threw out and I'm like, well, they, you know, that was the first girl I ever went out with. So bingo, there we go. <laughs> what are the odds? Yeah. Oh gosh, what are the first, odds date. That? first date. Here she is. Let's let her take it away. Hey there. My name is Becky and I'm your new marketing assistant, but I'm not just any old assistant. I'm an AI powered whiz kid who knows a thing or two about making your business soar. I'm here to tell you about the ACT marketing protocol, which is going to wow. absolutely level the playing field for you and your business. Here's a little secret. Did you know that top eight agencies worldwide have been using the same proven model for over 100 years? Well, John Limbacher, my creator, has taken that model and made it affordable for even the moms working at home, trying to make a few extra bucks on the side. This now, is just astounding. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Becky, how is this going to help me? Let me break it down for you. ACT is going to put the power of marketing to work for you to generate more leads, sales, and profits. Plus, it frees up your time by using marketing automation so you can spend more time doing what you love. Oh, and this is engaging, too. I mean, I'm sitting here going, wow, I want to hear what she says next. This is scale up and thrive. He's this is so generous good. with his time oh and has done so much for struggling business owners that you just can't help but love him. But enough about John. Let's talk about you. You need to check out the ACT program for your business. Trust me, it's going to work hard so you don't have to. And if you're feeling a little FOMO, that's because you should. Don't wait. <laughs> check out the ACT program today. Your wow. business will thank you later. Becky, don't hold back. Tell us what you think. Well, bye for now. But I'm sure I'll see you soon once you have seen the ACT program. How is that? Oh, my gosh. That is amazing. Now we're going to have to talk about the ACT program. <laughs> hold, hold that thought. As you're watching this, hang on to that thought. We're, we'll come back to that. But this, <laughs> You know, what really astounds me with that is 
I've seen some of the discussions about, you know, how, it, well, it's not quite ready because it's not a hundred percent photorealistic in, in some of the animated avatars, <laughs> the voice is, well, you know, it's not a hundred, you know, it's not a thousand percent natural human sounding voice. You took that right off the table up front with the, <laughs> Hey, you know, I'm, I'm an AI created avatar and, and it's just like going, Oh, okay. Yeah. She's it's, here to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. My gosh. Now, who's not going to want to talk to Becky, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, but, and, I mean, if, if, cause sometimes I'll be searching for something at odd hours or we can't be, we can't always be on the other end of the phone when someone reaches out to our businesses, even, even for a large corporation. So to have a tool like that, to have a service like that, where someone like Becky can go, Hey, you know what? Let's talk. So we can get the conversation going. We can start to create customer engagement, customer experience at the moment that they first have contact with us. It was really cool. I didn't even have to write the scripts, the words she was speaking, literally oh, AI generated. I was going to ask about that. You're, really? So that was all the, the script was AI generated as well. Absolutely. 100%. Oh I didn't even edit it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How crazy is that? Now are, are the, the tools that you used, described in your book about uh, on AI automation? Yes, I, I actually, that was the part I just updated today and specifically for your viewers, because I knew as soon as I showed them Becky, they're going to want to know, okay, how? how? <laughs> so okay. I put all the tools I use, I actually put the prompt in there too that generated the script. Because with AI, when you're asking the AI for something like you want mm -hmm. it to create for you. It is, it's just like anything else. If you put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. So in like chat, you guys have probably heard of chat GPT. That's the big one. That's the one that's yep. the big rave over a million people signed up for it. Like right out of the gate. The thing is it's a chat window and you're typing. It's just like you're texting with somebody and it's answering you like real time right now. You can ask it a question. It'll give you an answer based on everything it's read, which is everything that's printed. <laughs> it's pretty crazy how much information it has access to. But the thing is, when you ask it a question, you're going to get an answer based on the question that you asked. And they call that okay. a prompt. That's a prompt. You're prompting it to give you information. So if you give it like, you know, a, a, a hokey prompt, it's going to give you a hokey answer. Like the prompt that I gave it to generate that script, I believe was three paragraphs long. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's it, more than just a couple of, couple of lines of questions. I gave it a, a three paragraph question. You know, or actually it wasn't even a question. I gave it a command and okay. I started off with telling it, who it was. Oh, really? I said, I said, you are a chat robot. You are a female chat robot that is going to be my marketing assistant. Okay. And I told it everything I needed it to know to do what I asked it to do. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the thing of the future. Like everybody says, all this is going to put everybody out of business, right? Well, as it's putting people out of business on one side, it's going to be creating jobs on the other. Because just alone, the tool itself is not going to put anybody out of business. What's going to put somebody out of business is somebody figuring out how to use it. How to replace somebody, how to get more automation, how to do things faster and better and cheaper. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to replace people. But it's going to replace them with the people that know how to do that. So if you're in an industry like anything that has to do with graphical or anything that I just showed you, script writers, copywriters, uh, avatar creators, uh, animators, if you're in any of those kind of industries, you need to be switching gears right now to stay ahead of this. Yep. Because those jobs are going to be thinned out. 
like, I don't know if you remember or not, but I was a commercial photographer before I got into the internet. And I had a really juicy gig. I mean, I was doing special effects photography, very high end stuff. And I was making, this was back in the eighties. I was making like $3,500 a day plus expenses in the eighties. And I was doing special effects photography. And then all of a sudden, this little thing called Photoshop showed up on the scene. And I saw it and I recognized, oh my God, this is about to be the end. This career that I've got, this cushy deal is about to be over. And I was right on the money. I wasn't like a graphics person, so I didn't go into the graphics end and, you know, figure out how to use Photoshop. I changed gears altogether. I figured, okay, what are my customers going to need next that I would like to provide for them? And it was the internet. It was internet services, web development, web hosting, and then search engine optimization, ultimately. So <clears throat> talk about being in the right place at the right time and getting pushed into it. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. Well, it's also the ability to, to see the shift. Yeah. Early on. Or it happens before it's too yes. late. I remember I told Barb what was coming and it was shortly after we got married. And I said, you know, this career I've got is about to come to an end and she's flipping out. She's like, well, what are we going to do? And I'm like, it's not going to be a problem. And I shifted gears. I transitioned to where there was no gap. There was no fall. As I was mm. bringing on internet customers my photo customers were disappearing at about the same rate. Wow. So there was literally no sag whatsoever. But you're, if you're I were applying some of your boat, your boating principles, it's like pulling into the dock and stepping <laughs> on the dock and then off onto the next boat. Just <laughs> yeah. as everything's moving just in, in synchronization. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you've got to understand what's coming. If you can understand what's coming, you can prepare mm -hmm. properly for it. You can take advantage of it. And, you know, for me in that last transition, it actually made a better life for me. When I was in the photo career, I made great money. I mean, I had a great life doing that, but it was time for dollars. If I wasn't working, I wasn't making money. And as soon as I shifted into the Internet, that was the first time I actually had recurring revenue from hosting, from services, from all the stuff that I was doing. It was all recurring. And that was the first time it, I actually got set free in business and could just do whatever I wanted to do. So pretty cool shift. <laughs> actually living the dream of being able to work from anywhere before people even knew what that was. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And this, so is this, an, is this another equal shift? Because like in the 1980s, we had personal computers really became started to become common and people yeah. began mastering the use of that how you know how do we integrate it into business what do we do with them in, in the home then in the 90s it had the, the whole e-commerce shift onto the internet and a lot of uh art of, a lot of software tools came out at that time and we were using um art or virtual reality in product design in aerospace in those days <laughs> but it would trust me it was it would be embarrassing to compare it to the kind of wild <laughs> cool graphics that we get now but it, it was unbelievable improvement in what we could do. Uh -huh. So is this another one of those massive, every, everything's kind of changing under our feet? It, or we should be it paying is, attention it, moments? Well, it is and it isn't. It's like, it's not going to change human nature. Mm, good it's point. Not, yes. It's not going to change the way people purchase things. You know, it, it is going to change some pieces of the business for sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But the other thing I see about it is it's going to happen much faster. Like the transition, you know, from let's say me back in the day when I went from photographer to internet marketer, that transition took a time frame of over about five years. This is going to happen okay. overnight. And it's because of this, the speed of implementation is so fast on the internet right now because information is readily at your fingertips. And now with the chat bots, it's literally at your fingertips instantly. Wow. 
Like if you don't know how to do something, it was so funny. Just today, one of my clients said, Hey, can you make me a, an HT access file? <laughs> you probably don't know what that is. I have, I'm sorry. I have no idea. It's a file in an HTML website. Most people are on WordPress, so they don't have to deal with these backend files. But if you're on an old school HTML website, there's a file called HT access that does some things behind the scenes. And you have to literally like be a coder to write this code. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, it just looks like scrambled garbage. It's like, what the heck is that? But it does things that make the website work. So he asked me if I could write an HTML file for him to do this certain thing. And I'm like thinking, not on a good day could I write that. <laughs> but what I, it, it came to me, I'm like, hey, let's pull up chat GPT and have it write it for us. And it did. We the actual code. A code. It wrote the actual code. Oh, geez. in an instant. We told it what it when what it needed to do. We said, you are a programmer. You are a computer programmer, an expert in HTML. We would like you to write an HT access file to do the following actions. And mm -hmm. bingo, there it was. I, I, I need to interrupt for just a second because I want to talk to you as you're watching this right now. This is the second time John has mentioned this frame for, uh, you know, tell the chat, tell chat GTP what its role is and what it's doing. Second time that's been mentioned. If you didn't write it down the first time, write down that concept now, because that sounds like it is one of the keys to the kingdom to really get super performance in your, in terms of your responses back from, from chat GPT and other tools like that. Yeah. So that's absolutely. a huge insider tip. I just want to pull that thread real quick so you don't miss it. <laughs> yeah. That is really important that it's prompt. Like the new job, I think the new job of the future that is going to be really sought after is called a prompt engineer. Someone a that engineers engineer. those prompts. Yes. So it you, won't know, be, you won't be looking for a graphic artist. You'll be looking yeah. for a prompt engineer. So basically someone that knows how to ask the right questions mm -hmm. to get to get what you're specifically what you're looking for from the AI tool that you're using. Absolutely. That's where mm. the, it's like you said it. That's the keys to the kingdom right there. Okay. Ask and ye shall receive. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's, it's just, like, I'm sorry, go I, ahead. I have used this thing for so many different applications in just the last couple of months. Like here's a perfect example. I had a, one of my customers built a website for him and he wanted to rank in the search engines. I told him, I said, you need content. The search engine is not going to rank your site with thin content. You need content for the search engine to value your site and put you at the top. I waited months and months and months for him to get me this content. It just wasn't coming through. And then he sends me an email complaining that his site's not at the top. And I'm like, dude, you're, you're not helping me out here. I need content to make that happen. And when I, when I got off the phone with him, I actually called him to reiterate what, you know, what has been told to him many, many times in the past, but I called him and as I was hanging up, I'm like, why don't I just generate the content for him? I pull up chat GPT and I, I literally told it, I need content for a pool service man in Santa Clarita. And I listed the things he specialized in. I said, I need some content for his homepage. And, and it was actually it. specific to the city that he does business in. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The type of Whoa. service he did that, you know, I gave it as much as I could give it from what mm -hmm. I knew about what this guy did. And I said, I'd like it between 15 and 1800 words, which I knew that was what the search engine's going to want. And within less than three seconds, I had it. I pulled his website up, I pasted it in, and then I noticed, well, he's got five more pages about specific things here. So I took the prompt that I just wrote in, <clears throat> I copied it, I pasted it down to the next, the next prompt, and I just changed a couple of words. 
And I said, now I need a, based on what you just did for me, I would like another article specific to this. And one of them was natural gas pool heaters. And boom, up comes the article for that. And then I did one on automated pool cleaning systems, which was another thing that he offered. Boom. Within like 10 minutes, I had all the content for this guy's site updated at no cost. And at no cost in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And I that just is a game changer. Got, here's the really cool part. I did that about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago. I get an email this morning from the guy saying, I don't know what you did, but I just ran some searches and my site's on top for everything I wanted. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> I told it. Here's one of the prompts that I told it. I said, I want this content to be relevant to the search engines. I mm. want you to analyze the top sites. I want you to look at, at their keyword structure. And I want to compete. I want to beat them. Boom. It, it knew exactly how to do it. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I gave it to Santa Clarita. I said, I want you to analyze the competition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want you to build me content that's better, more relevant, going to rank higher. So it's like, it. Dang. Just for lack of a better word, it just shat it out. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty cool. While doing its nails. While doing its and, nails. And having a bite to eat. <laughs> Holy cow. That's just, that's incredible. That is truly incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I and, mean, it's just like one thing after another. I'm sitting here now doing my daily routine and every once in a while I'm like, you know, chat GPT could do this or one of these other AI, AI tools could do this. It's, a, it's... a friend of mine, a friend and mentor of mine in the 1990s, who was one of the early employees to, uh, with, with, um, oh, now I'm going blank on what it was. Their company was bought by Oracle in the oh. late nineties. Um, but it was the, it was the premier human resources software system for, for mid-sized companies at that time. And he told me, he goes, look, here's what you're going to see happen. And he goes, it's going to come probably in the next decade and it will happen so fast. It'll be frightening is that all of the white collar jobs are going to be automated. Like we saw happen with productivity improvements in blue collar jobs in the seventies and eighties. He goes, but this is going to happen a lot faster and it's going to, and it's going to wipe out, you know, half to 80% of the jobs. <clears throat> And it, it's a decade later than he predicted, but it seems like that's here. <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy. I mean, you can use it for so many different things. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I've been teaching marketing, you know, I'm, you know, of course, about the ACT program. Yes. I developed a yes. training program to teach struggling business owners how to market their own website. I did this many, many years ago. And one of the things that they struggle with when they're going through the course and they're learning how to market their business is the competition analysis and the avatar creation when they're trying to do their research to figure out their market and who's in their market and all the stuff they need to know to create good content that will actually sell to those people. So that's that's the how how to know, like the the demonstration you did with Becky. When she yeah. goes, let's talk about you. And then just started going, you know, from a business owner standpoint, it's like going, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Of course. Yeah. That's how you know what, what needs to be focused on then mm -hmm. to get yeah, that kind you, of scripting. Because, you know, before AI, before this, you know, we had to do this all manually yeah. and we could get the information, but we'd have to dig it out. We'd have to go to you know, use different tools. Like Google had a lot of tools to help advertisers figure out their demographics, figure out their audiences. Facebook had the same type of tools, but it was a lot of work. And it was like, it was like mentally strenuous. And it's yeah. probably a lot easier for me because I've been doing it so long. But when I tell other people how to do it, they really struggle with that piece. And it's probably the most important piece of your marketing is figuring out 
who you're selling to, why they want what you're selling, and and what they're going to do with it. You know, why they want it, mm -hmm. what it's going to do for them. Well, and that's why top copywriters and top strategists like yourself get a <clears throat> top dollar because it is not. <laughs> I, yeah. As a business owner, it, it is tough. It's easier to do it for someone else as well. But to have that that self-awareness and perspective on my business and yeah. be able to write the copy or even to get the perspective <laughs> to, to know what information to hand to to the person you like to hand to you or to hand to someone to say, here, I can I can put this together for you is a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the that's the whole reason why I call the program act. It's analysis first. Okay. then creation and then traffic. You know, it's like you have to figure out your market first. You mm -hmm. got to know everything about it to effectively communicate with it. That's where creating the copy and all that, creating websites, creating offers, even products. You know, you should be creating your products based on the market, not creating products and hoping there's a market for it. You know, I see a mm -hmm. lot of people that do that and then they find out the market doesn't exist or it's not the right market. You know, maybe there's enough people in it, but they can't afford it. Well, but now wait a minute. I've been told if I build the better mousetrap, people <laughs> will build, will be the path to my doorway. <laughs> yeah. Build it. If you build it, they will come. I, yeah. I've, I've heard that too. I've just never seen it in reality. <laughs> <laughs> if that was true. We'd all be, we'd all still be using uh, Betamax. Yeah. tape players to record record tv shows and play them back yeah i get asked a lot the question of you know what's the biggest mistake that entrepreneurs and ceos make mm -hmm. and i think the biggest mistake they make is underestimating how difficult it is to actually make a sale of what you're selling they underestimate that they think that people are just going to beat a path to their door and knock them down to buy what they're selling. And that just doesn't happen through osmosis. Well, that and, and what branding and marketing and advertising and doing it all correctly. So how, how do we create, because I've, I've experienced some marketing where I, I listen to what they're talking about. It's something that I have an interest in or a need, you know, uh, they're, they're solving a problem that I've got. Mm -hmm. I'm going, Oh, okay. I didn't even know you guys existed. And it's almost like they've been following me around all day long uh -huh. in yeah, the marketing. They, Why is some marketing so good at that? And most of it d just noise and you know, it just and it doesn't even register. It's super simple. They understand who they're talking to. They understand okay what that person wants, why they want it, and they can communicate the value. You know, there's, there's two things. If you're trying to sell something, you have, you have to sell it to two people. And I'm not talking about a man and his wife, two people that occupy the same body and it's the heart and the head. And it's kind of like the subconscious versus the conscious mind. And you literally have to appeal to both of them. You have to seduce the heart, the heart. That's the first job you seduce the heart. That's the subconscious. The heart is where all desire lives. The heart's like a little kid. It wants what it wants and it wants it now. And it doesn't care about consequences. It just wants what it wants. So if you show it what it wants and you make the promise of the desired outcome, you're going to create demand and desire for the product or the service or whatever it is. But you have this thing that steps in the way called the head. And the head is like the parent. It's the conscious mind. The job of the parent is protect the child. Don't let the child get harmed. So the head's going to step in the way and say, oh, well, wait a minute. Not so fast there. I don't believe it. Convince me. I want to make sure the heart doesn't get broken. Now this stuff's going on at a, at a very deep subconscious level. Nobody knows this. They don't acknowledge it. They don't recognize it, but it's what's happening under the hood. So a good salesperson, they know this. They know they have to grab your attention. They know they have to create that demand and desire first. So they talk about the benefits. They talk about the desired outcome. They seduce the heart. Once the heart is seduced and it wants it, the only thing standing in the way of a, of a sale is going to be objections. 
So now the salesperson really actually has to go to work and convince the head. And it does that with logic and reason and charts and graphs. And it has to do the convincing part. Once that happens and you convinced the head that the heart's going to get what it wants and it's not going to get broken, a sale is absolutely imminent. Okay. <laughs> but that, it makes sense. Now, I don't know if you've that ever heard sense. it explained that way, but <laughs> that is the way ad agencies have done it for over a hundred years. And that's what, that's what I base the act program on. Well, it's like the, the TV show Mad Men. Mm -hmm. Is that exactly. it was part of what they were demonstrating? That's exactly it. If you've ever seen Mad Men, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, there Don Draper is the character in there. He actually portrays a real live ad man in the in the 1950s named David Ogilvy. And David Ogilvy oh. was interviewed one time. And they asked him, they said, David, how is it every ad campaign you touch turns to gold? How is that? We've never seen anything like it. And he said, it's simple. He said, every ad campaign that I get involved with, the first thing we do, is called the big idea. And, you know, it's not just an idea that's large in size. He just coined that okay. phrase as a, as a way to grab attention. And uh, he said, any campaign that does not have a big idea on the front end of it is going to pass like a ship in the night meaning it's not going to get seen. And if it doesn't get seen, you have no way to seduce the heart. It's game over. Those of you that remember pinball, you just tilted. Game over. <laughs> You're not going any further. So that, so that, that, was, that was like that, a key element. That sets up that whole process. Now you've got attention. It's like going, ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait. I want to hear more about that, which opens the, the door to seducing the heart and then sealing when, the sealing the deal, so to speak, with saying, here's the logic of why this is why this is good. Yeah. When you grab attention, okay. you for a split second have the ear of the heart. Remember, the heart's like a little kid. It's not going to hold attention very long. Mm -hmm. you literally have a split second to slide it in. You grab the attention, you've got the, the ear of the heart for a split second, and you have to seduce the heart, talking about the desire of the heart, the, the benefits. What is it going to get? When you talk about the desired outcome of the heart, you'll hold its attention. You will get it to want what you have, and then it's going to be like that nagging little kid that wants the candy bar when he sees it in the store, and he's not going to let mom and dad, you know, not going to give him a minute's rest until he gets what he wants. Right. That's yeah, how it that works. Sense. Wow. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> but so, so this is the kind of information that you had, you already gone through the analysis process, for example, before you used chat GPT to create the script for Becky. Correct. I already knew it okay. just from experience, mm -hmm. but what I was doing, I was, prompting chat GPT in a way that it would discover it on its own. And it did. Okay. That was the amazing part because I knew how to lead it. It ah. actually pulled out exactly what I wanted. But on the other part, let's say you're not quite ready to start creating scripts or something. And you're just trying to really figure this out from scratch. You're trying to figure out, you know, what's important to your market and all this. And I did this live I had a group of people I was talking to about marketing just a, a few weeks ago and chat GPT came up and I said, well, let me give you an example of how you would use this to do your market research. And I said, you know, anyone on here want me to do this for them? I'll, I'll use you as a, a guinea pig. And a woman stepped out. She says, I'm a massage therapist. How would I use it? So I said, all right, here we go. I pulled it up and I said, you are a massage therapist. I want you to do research and tell me what are the main benefits of massage therapy. And it gave me a bulleted list of all the benefits. That is the benefits are what people want. And then I asked it, why are these benefits important to these people? 
Now it's telling me why. And then I said, based on this, what would be the objections? Why would somebody not want this? And it gave me a list of all the objections. And I said, what's the best way to overcome each one of these objections? And it was literally writing the marketing copy for me on the fly. I was just asking it everything I wanted to know about how to sell into that market. I knew nothing about massage therapy other than how good it feels before I started that process. But within a few minutes, I knew everything I needed to know about that market to sell into them very effectively. And that's, that's just mind boggling to be able to do yeah. that, that, that conveniently that quickly. Yeah. It, it's absolutely awesome. The power at your fingertips. The thing is you got to know how to use it. Yes. Without knowing how to do those prompts, it's just another tool. It's just another shiny object. And, and I have to admit that something that I have found uh, daunting would be a really polite and PG-13 way to put it is because because you've been in it as you're watching this. I mentioned at the beginning, I'm, I'm part of John's community. I've been in. He, he runs an incredible weekly mastermind that you need to be there. Just saying, uh, it, it as we've been talking about this, I've looked at tools and, and you know watched some some educational videos and whatnot. The people that are that like yourself that are that are talking about this have at least a two year head start on everyone else, and and really long as you were describing earlier, it goes back way longer than that. Yeah, but specifically like with Chat GPT, people have been you know have been working with that for a couple of years. So when it comes to you know, and I had that in the back of my mind going, I need to learn how to properly use this. I'm like going, holy cow, these are folks that have a two year head start on me on something that that's like an exponential curve. But Chat GPT can catch you up in an instant. How about if I asking? if I know how to use it correctly? Well, how about asking it? Say, Chat GPT, really? What would you use to prompt me to find out market research? It'll give you a list of the prompts. O M G. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It removes the learning curve. I, I don't understand. Tell me what I'm missing is basically, I can ask, I can basically ask you it that. Ask it exactly that. My wife what is going to be laughing to so hard when she hears that because she knows I need a tool like that. You could ask it, what do I need to know to be able to sell yeah. to people in this market? What do I need to know mm -hmm. about this market? And, it'll and then I can ask it, okay, what, what else do I, uh, for you, for you to be able to help me, what else do you need from me? Yeah. You can literally ask it <laughs> stuff like that. You can talk to it like it's a real person. It understands. And the, the, the output is absolutely astounding. Mm -hmm. Like almost everything that it's put out for me, I have not had to edit whatsoever. Now, people talk about plagiarism. They say, you know, is this copyrightable? You know, what's the deal with that? It's like anything with creation. Creation of anything is copyrightable to you if you truly mm -hmm. create it. Now, the prompting in here is what's going to make it unique. If you ask it a generic question that 100 people are asking it, it's going to give 100 different variations. It's never going to give the same thing twice, but it's going to sound the same, and it might get flagged for plagiarism. But if you ask it to give it to you in a certain way, that's how you get around that. Like, <clears throat> I'll give you an example. I was using it to write a sales copy letter. And remember, we just talked about David Ogilvy. Yes. Yes. I said, could you, I'm looking down because I'm making notes here as you're watching this, I should have something to write that, write this down with. My I said, could you write the sales letter in the tone of David Ogilvy? Okay. And it did. Wow. You could like look at the copy, the sales copy that he wrote, and you could mm -hmm. almost hear his voice in it. It was crazy. The other thing you can do, and I love to do this whenever I'm doing marketing copy or whenever I'm working with somebody figuring out their copy, 
I always have to dumb them down. Mm -hmm. People like to go up and they can't do that in marketing. You have to go down to the common denominator. I, I, I understand. I'm a recovering engineer. That, that is, <laughs> yes, I, I, but know, even, I understand. Even if, even if you're selling engineer to engineer, yep. you should not sell engineer to engineer with engineer talk. Go to third grade level and you'll quadruple your sales almost every time. You know, that when I worked for Hughes Aircraft in the 1980s and I did it, one of my assignments was in the training department. They did a survey of, so this is, this is like the big brains of the time. They had a whole bunch of master's degrees and PhDs working there. The, 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 what came back was the people, the top, some of the top engineers in the world, right? They were considered the best systems engineers in the world. Hands down, the company owned 85% of the satellites in orbit just to, set the table on the impact that this had when we found that the company's staff, everybody employed at the company read at an average of a fifth grade level. Uh -huh. They broke out specifically for the, for the doctorate level people that worked there. They were all the way up to eighth grade level. Yeah. So I, I that bl blinding flash of the obvious in hindsight, that, that makes sense. If we're, if we're writing to a third grade level, then it's something yeah. that people are, it, it's easier to, comprehend it's easier to, to relate to mm -hmm. so that's one of the things that i'll prompt it with is is write the copy at a third grade level mm -hmm. and i tell it to use the common slang for the particular niche because every oh, that's industry brilliant. oh yeah every industry has its own mm -hmm. secret language they yep. have words that they use that is meaningful within their little circle and then each company has a little, sometimes a little tweak. I learned that in consulting. You know, I just had to learn if it was a new industry, what what's the language? How do they talk about stuff? And then specifically at that client company, what's their yeah. little tweak to that? Yeah, exactly. That's otherwise their... you're dead in the water. They just wouldn't couldn't get stuff done. Yeah, use industry terms, industry slang. If it's from a particular section of the country, you might actually oh, use. Yeah. There's different dialects. Yeah of the English language. So you want to, you want to be totally in tune with who you're marketing to. And you can just tell chat GPT and it understands that and it'll just do it for you. Incredible. The other thing that you can do is you can say, end it off with a little bit of humor yet put a sense of urgency to it. And you notice Becky did mm. that. Remember mm -hmm. she, the, she put the FOMO in there. She put the sense of urgency in there and she added a little humor to it. She went back and forth from light to serious. Mm -hmm. and, it, and when it spits that out, that is pretty unique content to you. That's not just like, you know, give me a bulleted list of, of stuff that's all yeah. going to come out the same. It, it, but it sounds like as you're going through this process, even if, if 10 people are targeting the same industry niche, as they're going through the process of asking these questions, setting up their focus, they're going to get enough of a different answer that they'll still have very unique uh, mm -hmm. marketing programs. Yeah. When they roll it out. Yeah. And I make it my job to ask better questions. So I'll get better answers. I'll have better content. I'll rank better. I'll make more sales because I ask better questions mm -hmm. and think about that. What is a really top notch salesman do? Yeah. Asks questions. You ask yourself, why does he do that? Cause he wants to figure out what's important so he can tailor his speech. He can tailor his presentation. He can build trust and rapport. We all love ourselves, right? Your favorite person's the one you see in the mirror when you get up, right? So what does he want to become? He wants to become the person in the mirror so he can sell to you, so you trust him. That's why he's asking you questions. So you can ask the questions of chat GPT and get the answers you need to become the person they see in the mirror. You're having the whole sales conversation before the sale. Yeah. Before exactly. the sales meeting ever even starts. Yeah. You've won the game before you even stepped onto the field. That's the only game I play. 
If yeah. I can't win, I have no interest in playing. <laughs> but it's still, it, it, it sounds like it's still, we need, so as a, as a business owner, especially leading a team that's doing stuff for me, if I'm in that, you know, in that role, scaling up a business, I still need to understand that framework and make sure that my team does in order to know, so they know what the process is that needs to be followed and, and what sequence to ask, what types of questions is that? Yeah. As a, the higher you up, the higher you are on the ladder, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the more responsible you are for the teams below you. Right. Right. So I would be asking chat GPT different questions. Mm -hmm. I'd be asking it. How do I get what I want out of the team below me? How do I communicate mm. with them? What is important to them? Yes. How do I motivate them to get me what I want? And it'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> or you, yeah, I mean, you can figure it out on your own. You'll have a pretty good learning curve there. I'm sure you, <laughs> I'm sure you've seen that in companies. So long as, with. so long as the competitor down the street's not <laughs> doing, doing what you're recommending while I'm figuring it out on my own. I have a feeling that won't end very well. That's, that's the whole thing. I mean, as a business owner, you need to look at the road ahead. There's not very many businesses that just run status quo forever. And the ones that do don't last forever. I mean, there's been some pretty large companies in our recent history that disappeared that were looked at as unstoppable. Yeah. I mean, what happened to Kodak? Yeah. I, I worked for two Fortune 500 companies. One of them was a Fortune 100 company that, that nobody would remember the name of today. It's like I talk about Hughes Aircraft. Yeah. And unless you're over a certain age, probably have would have no idea yeah. what the company is, let alone the significance. And, and Howard Hughes was kind of the Elon Musk of his era in, mm -hmm. some, in some ways. He affected yeah. many different industries. And then I was the, ended my corporate life, if you will, and McDonnell Douglas, which was bought out by another Fortune 100 company, yeah, Boeing. Yeah, which is now which is now Boeing. But no, there there's, you know, again, anybody under 30 years of age probably wouldn't be familiar with McDonnell Douglas. And these were storied companies, you know, that, that were just legends for what they did, like Kodak. And it's you know what, yeah. Fortune 500 changes over what on about a seven year cycle. <laughs> yeah. So you gotta. You've got to have your eyes on the road ahead. Yep. So it's even it's even tougher for the rest of us in you know in the middle market, in the mid-sized companies, the established small businesses, to be able to maintain a competitive advantage. Yeah, yeah. I work with a lot of small companies. Yep. A lot of startups. A lot of people that you know have started up and are struggling. They're the easiest ones because they're so nimble. You know, they don't have a lot of corporate umbrella to deal with. They can change. At a moment's notice, that's mm -hmm. like me. I can switch my gears in a in an instant, and they're the so ones this, that are probably going to get the most advantage out of this. I was just going to ask that because that sounds like this is this is something that really gives the most leverage, the most competitive advantage to the smaller companies, exactly yeah. for that reason because they yeah. don't have that. But when I worked at McDonnell Douglas, I was in uh, it was designing launch systems. And mm -hmm. we couldn't do some of the stuff that SpaceX has done in the last 15 years. We couldn't do because of organizational barriers, because of, yep. of you know, some of it was just so much money invested in fixed in fixed machinery and equipment and whatnot that we couldn't make the changes because the price tag on it was just un, unrealistic, would have bankrupted yeah. the company. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, there is there is one tool that we all have available to us that's far more powerful than any of the tools that we talked about. And, and without it, they're worthless. And what would that be? That's the one that lives between your ears. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is both the good news and, and for, um, for me and some other people, maybe the bad news too. It's the, probably the <laughs> most <laughs> underutilized tool yeah. in human history <laughs> yeah all, all kidding aside that is the rings so true yeah you know, it's how creative can we be how creative can i be at making use of a new tool like this 
Yeah. And it's not necessarily about creativity either. Really? Some, I mean, you don't have to have a stick of creativity in your body to do this. All you have to do is you, you have to be, if you're, you can use the creativity. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. It's not that it's not useful. If you got it, use it. But if you don't have it, use what you do have. Like you've got an engineering mind. You can use that engineering mind to develop creativity out of these other tools. Let them be creative for you. Just ask them to. Okay. Right? Does that make another writer? Yeah, it's another writer downer. I'm making a note right here. It doesn't matter what tools you have. You use them to leverage these tools to get what you want. That has never been available to us that I'm aware of. Never in, in my lifetime have tools been available that anyone could leverage to, to get the kind of horsepower that we're talking about here. Yeah. That's exactly pretty phenomenal. <laughs> it really it's is. just, it's just unbelievable, you know, and it's, I'm, I'm watching the clock. We're coming up on top of the hour <laughs> and I promise not to keep you super long. And this is, this has been a great conversation and we're just barely scratching the surface. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, you know, you had mentioned my group, my, my weekly mm-hmm. calls. That's yeah. what I'm helping people do. I'm really helping them use what's between their ears to get that is so true. Them effect out of their business, their lives, their, mm-hmm. you know, generating freedom. Cause you, you know, we all have access to the same tool there. It's, it's been there since you were born. It's just waiting for you to use it. <laughs> and, and every, and every high performer has coaches and mentors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? And one, one of the things that, that, cause I can personally attest to that is, that is true in that group. Yeah. Like the, the, um, annual, you know, the year end review that you mm-hmm. took us all through where it's like going, okay, where are you with your business? What's coming up? You know, even though we'd all done our, our annual plans, it was still just such a powerful conversation to have a look. Here's what's, you know, here's what's coming up. Here's some things that we may have, you know, there was spent some thank you for the reminder moments. And there was some like, oh my gosh, yes. How did I miss that in that conversation? Well, it's also, it's a muscle. Mm-hmm. If you don't exercise it it'll atrophy just like the other muscles in your body. You know, you got people that they'll spend hours and hours and hours going to the gym, working out, you know, toning their body. So it's high performance. Yep. But they don't do it with their brain. That is true. Some do, some don't, but it's the same thing. Like that weekly call. That's like, that's mental exercise. Mm hmm. Well, and, and to hear the Power. other questions that people bring up or the, you know, to be able to review what they're doing go, Hey, let me, you know, John, would you review this? And then we get to benefit from that, but also ask other questions around that. It's just it's yeah. phenomenal. It's gold. It is just absolutely golden knowledge. Yeah. And I like, always like, always appreciate the theme of how do we do this? So we're not working a hundred hours a week, getting it done. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Because you know that's not for me. <laughs> oh, no, no. But you model that too, though. The way you've built your businesses. And as you're watching this, yes, I said businesses plural. <laughs> you know, to be run in a way that you have, you know, that you have the time and the freedom to go fishing, which you which you love to do. And and I've I've been on Jones boat a few times and man, let me tell you, it's the only way to only way to live. Actually, but to be able to, to do those types of things. You got that one wrong though. Oh, okay. A lot of people think I love fishing. Yeah. I hate fishing. Really? I oh, can't uh, stand fishing. Yep. Yep. I like catching. catching. Yes. The same in business. I don't like fishing for prospects. I don't like fishing for customers. Mm. I like catching customers. Yes. And and that is the perfect insight to say, hey, we promised as you're watching this that if you stay with us. We'll show you how you can get two, you get two things for you. And the first is how to get a free copy of John's book, the AI marketing automation, the unfair advantage, which you want that for your business, right? The unfair advantage. So here is the link. We put it in the banner below here. Go to internetdominators.com slash AI book. 
and you can get a free copy of this. John, you just updated this too, didn't you? With all yeah. this new stuff that's coming out. Just today, I updated it. I put uh, Becky and all the prompts and all the tools and all that stuff in there, That how I did that. So, so latest and greatest information. That's for you for being with us today. And this is information that you need in terms of what's available. How do you correctly, you know, how, how do you leverage it to get the results that you want so that you can scale your business, not work yourself to death in the process, be able to spend time with your family or start the family that, you, that you've dreamed about and do the other things in life that you wanted to do, right? That's why we start our businesses so that we can build a life, not so that we can work 100, 150 hours a week you know, on the business. <laughs> <laughs> that's it you know that and then also uh john i understand that if uh you know to have a, a conversation about specifically that was the wrong banner here's what i wanted to show no i see what i did i said uh so if you go to this link on john's website at internet dominators this is actually this includes my um affiliate link so so for full <laughs> disclosure because I, you know, I've learned so much from John and he is definitely the real deal. You've probably caught that in talking with him. He is fun to work with. He's super insightful and he, he models the way he walks the talk. He says, look, here's what I'm learning. Here's how I built my business so that I have time to do the things that I always wanted to do, not live in the business. And here, you know, here's how to leverage the technology. He builds the, he builds Becky and then goes, okay, here's, here's how to do that. So to learn that, to be able to talk about your specific business, and to get a you know a free 15 minute is it 15 minutes john yeah a free yeah. consult so free. you get, get a free 15 minute conversation to answer your questions directly go go to this link we'll put it in the notes in the comments as well online yeah. john this has been amazing thank you so much awesome i got one thing i'll leave you with here okay success is based on intel and it doesn't matter if you're fishing or doing business you don't leave the dock without the intel. Or you're just going to burn fuel and you'll be fishing, not catching. <laughs> yeah. Or, or you may end up on a three hour tour with Gilligan. <laughs> They're even worse. <laughs> Got to have the intel before you leave the dock. I love that. Yeah. John, thank you so much. Thank you for watching this. We've, this has been uh, John Limbacher, founder of Internet Dominators with us today in this is wolf's watch thanks for being part of the conversation this is 21st century television live and interactive if you are watching this on the replay still go ahead and post your questions we watch that uh post show and if you post a question in the comments we'll make sure it gets answered for you thanks for being with us thanks for being part of wolf's watch and i will see you on the trail <laughs>